If you have trouble feeling any kind of RDL or deadlift type motion in your hips rather than your back, this is gonna be the video for you. I'm gonna provide you with one simple concept in terms of cueing and how you can think about the hinge that's different from what you've probably heard. So here it goes. So first of all, what is a hinge fundamentally, right? It's basically a motion where we're taking our pelvis, which is this thing right here, which we'll revisit in a moment, right? So basically there's the connection between your spine and the rest of your lower body. And it's a, it's a motion where you're taking your pelvis and you're moving it sort of more parallel to the ground as opposed to perpendicular from the ground, right? So a squatting type motion that is much more sort of vertically driven is a motion where your pelvis and your spine kind of moves upward and downward, generally speaking, as a pattern. And a hinge is the alternative where instead of moving up to down in this direction, right, where your knees go forward and your hips go backward, you're primarily just thinking about driving your hips in this direction. And in order to get from this position to this position, what people often think about is cueing the hips in this direction, right? So in essence, this is the lowering phase and then this is the raising phase, kind of thrusting the bar upward. And this is a very common description and I think it makes sense in certain contexts and certain people can think about it this way and have massive amounts of success. But the problem with this is the fact that a lot of times when we just simply think about moving the hips forward and backward, i.e., oh, just push your hips back, that can oftentimes lead to undesirable outcomes. For example, if you're trying to train your hips, like rounding your low back over like this toward the bottom to a position where now all of a sudden your erectors and your back are doing a lot of the work as compared to your hips, right? Because ideally in a hip hinge movement, we're primarily loading things like the glutes and the hamstrings and the adductors as opposed to the erector muscles, at least primarily. The erectors will always be contributing because they need to keep your spine rigid but this oftentimes doesn't end up working out. Why? Well, because the spine has, you know, 70 odd joints that basically are all moving simultaneously to the hips. And so if you just have this vague idea of like, okay, I move hip forward and hip backward, a lot of times that doesn't give a very clear direction to the brain insofar as how the brain should coordinate the hip hinge. So what should we do instead? And what is my personal advice in terms of how you should think about and cue a hinging motion? Well, again, it all comes back to the pelvis. Why? Well, because where we're trying to create motion in this particular exercise, again, forgetting about the knee in this particular context, is around this joint right here. So here's the uh, socket of the hip joint. And just imagine that your femur, your leg, sits somewhere like this, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to fix the femur to some degree, the upper leg, and then we're trying to basically just move the pelvis like this. And what we're also trying to do is we're also trying to keep this spine pretty much rigid, right? So here is basically the lower part of the spine. What we're trying to do for the most part, if we're trying to train the hips, is keep this thing rigid. And so where we want to think about motion is not over here or just here vaguely, i.e. something that might be like, hey, move this forward and backward. It can mean a lot of different things in, in terms of how the brain interprets that cue. But if we think about this specific socket right here, and we think about moving this specific socket instead, now all of a sudden we have a very different understanding of what the motion is actually trying to do and what we're actually trying to accomplish as a consequence. So how should we think about this? Here's a really simple analogy. Imagine that from the side, the pelvis is a steering wheel. Okay, so around the pelvis, there is this circle. Okay, so you all looking at uh, the pelvis this way, you're looking at this person do a hinge side to side. If you imagine that the pelvis is a wheel, a circle, what you can imagine is that we have this ability to, if we grab one side of the rail, let's say, and wheel and we make a right turn, we can kind of tip the pelvis in this direction. And then if our hand still st sort of stays on that portion of the wheel and we turn the wheel to the left now, now all of a sudden we have basically the opposite motion. And so thinking about the pelvis basically as this wheel-like thing allows us to basically just isolate motion at this joint, which is ultimately what we want in a hinge. And so what I want you all to think about is basically isolate your pelvis as a unit and then imagine that on the way down you are spinning a wheel downward toward the floor you're not consciously thinking about trying to keep your back rigid or not move your back from the position it's starting in what you're doing is you're bringing all your attention to this joint and if you can basically just make it so that you're imagining this wheel turning forward turning backward then all the motion will naturally start to occur 
more at this joint as opposed to the others. And so another simple way to think about this is, uh, and again, this is all kind of me saying the same thing in slightly different ways, is instead of necessarily just thinking about this sort of turning concept, because that may be a little bit um, just not easy to digest for some of you, imagine that you have a string and imagine the string is attached to the back of your pelvis. And on the way down, and you can all just, you know, if you're watching this on your computer or your phone, just stand up and do this as I'm describing it. Imagine that like around the area of your lower butt cheeks, you have a string and that string on the way down is pulling upward toward the ceiling. And then as you reverse out of the bottom, that string stays right where it is. It's basically just on your lower butt cheeks. But now all of a sudden the string is pulling downward and the string pulling downward will basically just return you to that start point. And so this concept of the string pulling up versus pulling down is in essence the same as thinking about a wheel spinning this way forward or spinning backward this way. And again, when you draw all of your attention to this joint, your brain doesn't necessarily need to think about a ton of different things in relationship to your spine because you're not, uh, enforcing a cue that is vague and sort of unspecific in terms of where you want the rotation to actually occur. And so then instead of basically just thinking about this sort of vague direction of I'm shoving backward, I'm shoving forward, you are isolating this specific joint i.e. the hip joint, and you're saying, okay, I'm gonna turn this forward and I'm gonna then turn it in the backward direction. And similarly, again, if you think about that string analogy, you're thinking about the lower portion of the butt cheek, basically just being pulled upward as you lower, and then being pulled downward toward the floor as you raise the chest up. Now, if you find that you're getting to a point where you kind of have a better idea of what I'm talking about, but still you're sensing a lot of this like lower back sort of pelvic tilting rotation, now comes a time where you may need to start to think about your chest and what your chest is doing. And so now as that string is pulling up as you lower, you want to imagine that your chest is coming downward toward the floor, almost like now a string is attached to the chest and a string is pulling downward from the perspective of the chest and a string is pulling upward toward the ceiling from the perspective of the glutes and the hamstrings. And then again, just reverse action. Now all of a sudden that string that's attached to your chest, it's pulling directly upward and backward toward the ceiling as the string around your pelvis is pulling directly downward toward the floor. So overall, the main concept is this. People tend to struggle during the hinge because they're thinking about just this whole entire area too vaguely, right? They're thinking about just shoving everything back and everything forward. But we need to draw our attention more specifically to creating rotation around this joint so that we can either turn the wheel forward and backward or pull the string upward and pull the string downward. And remember that in tandem with thinking about the pelvis, if just thinking about the pelvis doesn't get it done for you, then you want to, in addition to that, think about the strings again that I described that are pulling from the chest. So again, as you lower, the string on the butt is pulling up and the string on the chest is pulling down. But when you reverse out of this to get back to this position right here, that string pulls up toward the top and then the string on the pelvis pulls back down, kind of like a seesaw that you're just tipping in either direction. If you found this video helpful and you appreciated the tips in it, then you will love learning more about biomechanics in my beginner biomechanics course. It's basically like a cheat sheet to learning all this stuff at a more conceptual and fine tuned level. It's for the absolute beginner, so you need no experience or understanding of any kind of anatomy. I'm gonna do all the work for you in that regard. And if you wanna check that out, link is in the description below.